Um, I'm going to be more relevant than Martin's guitar solo. And, and probably slightly less relevant than John. Um, the, the, um, and I was thinking what the connection with this audience is uh, to the subject that I've, um, the subjects I've been marinating in for the last four or five years. And I think the, the connection is um, the globalization of ideas. Uh, it is amazingly, it is amazing how powerful an idea is now in the world because it spreads across borders incredibly quickly. And the two ideas that I'm going to be talking about uh, are good examples. So I'm going to be talking about um, uh, essentially the world I've been coming out of as a writer and the world I'm going into. Uh, the world I've been coming out of is, is, is I've been writing quite a bit about a revolution that's been going on in, in professional sports. Uh, and I'm about to start um, a book about this financial upheaval that we're all going through. And the two are oddly connected. Um, let me start with the sports, just give you um, um, 10 or 15 minutes about where I'm coming from, uh, because it will explain, I, I think it will inform uh, the discussion about, about finance and the, the mess that Wall Street has gotten us all into. Um, uh, I had, um, very little interest in, in, in being a sports journalist. I lived out here in the Bay Area. And uh, I did, I, my, my eye was caught by this curious uh, financial predicament in professional baseball. Um, the, the, um, unlike a lot of the other major American professional sports, but like British soccer, um, there are these huge financial imbalances in, in professional baseball. So you have uh, rich teams and poor teams. And um, the New York Yankees is the richest team, and they'll spend a couple of hundred million dollars every year on players. And the Oakland A's in my backyard were our poor team, spend maybe $40 million on players. And, and in the um, five or six years ago, it became clear that um, the market for baseball players must not make much sense because the Oakland A's were winning as many games as the New York Yan Yankees and had been doing so for several years. Uh, and I walked into the Oakland A's front office to ask how this could be. And it turned out that, um, uh, that they were, that, that they had sensed their financial disadvantage and it started looking for some intellectual edge to offset the financial disadvantage. And it started to um, find better ways to, to measure the value of a baseball player and better ways to me measure the effectiveness of a baseball strategy. Um, at the same time, professional baseball was in a tizzy about these financial imbalances. We're sure that um, rich teams were going to just acquire all the best players. As the imbalances grew, as they were, and they had been growing, um, that rich teams would acquire all the best players and just beat the poor teams every year. And so convened a commission to try to study the problem, figure out how to smuggle in, like, basically, salary caps and revenue sharing and, and, and level the playing field. Um, the, the commissioner at Bud Sealy Baseball happened to own one of the poor teams, so he had to do an agenda. On his commission, however, he put a financial person, uh, um, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve, Paul Volcker. And Paul Volcker, uh, when he was presented with this, with the information, uh, said, um, before we start changing baseball, I have a question. My question is, if this is such a problem, how come the Oakland way A's are winning so many baseball games? And um, the commissioner, disturbed by the idea that his plans were being, uh, uh, had hit this kind of roadblock, uh, called up the general manager of the Oakland A's, uh, named Billy B. Uh, and said, Billy, you got to fly to New York tomorrow and explain to Paul Volcker uh, why you're winning so many games. And the explanation better be good, kind of thing. And, and so Billy B. got a plane and went to New York. And, uh, and looked Paul Walker in the eye, and he said, I have no idea how it is. <laughs> he 
said, it's just luck. And uh, you got to give us some of that money the New York Yankees have. Because if you don't, we can't compete in the future.